here's uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself in case if you don't understand effectively. Uh, I've been always involved in planning and design uh, since I was like 12 years old or so. Uh, I got introduced by those uh, SimCity games. I don't know if you're aware yeah, about I them. Yeah, I used to play those when I was a kid. Yeah, and I got influenced by the housing boom. I was raised in the Inland Empire, so we saw it boom and bust. And then once I got good at it, uh, I was uh, introduced uh, later on uh, to this organization called New Urbanism. Have you heard of them? Um, not the organization specifically, but I mean, I, I know the term. New urbanism slash smart growth. Yeah. I mean, I don't know of a specific organization, but I mean, obviously I know the term. Yeah. And, uh, later on, uh, the following year, I just didn't really like and approve of what they are, they were doing. I kind of, uh, woke up out of it, and uh, I developed my own system of urban planning. I call it Cyrus Planning. I believe it's one of the best solutions for our urban planning crisis. Where we both may agree, uh, Grindel, is that we both agree that smart growth, the sustainable development, is not a good model. Can we both agree on that? Yeah, let me, uh, let me stop you for one second. Anyway, so you were saying about sustainability... Yeah, so I'm not a favor of a lot of the programs, and but so this is where we may agree on. But here's where we may not agree on, and I think that you are not aware. The system, now let me ask you a question. What is the system that smart growth is trying to fight? Can you answer that question? Uh, well, I would, well, there's a few ways I could say it. You could either say the Industrial Revolution, you could say capitalism. Um, I, I would start You're, there. You're not getting it. It's called sprawl. Okay, They're yeah, I mean, I, yeah, sprawl. I know what sprawl is. Now, here's where we may disagree. I don't like sprawl. Sprawl is a horrible system. It's a disgusting system. Uh, it has ruined much of this country, although it has benefits, and much of the world. Uh, it's a system where land uses are segregated and everything is dependent on cars. And where we may disagree is that this system is not really a product of the free market. It's heavily subsidized, it's heavily rigged by codes and zoning laws, and it got federal intervention too. It was the Interstate Highway Act, it was the Federal Housing Administration got that intervened, and there was a lot of special interest groups that pushed for that system, by the way, our car culture. So I don't think that the system that the smart growth is trying to replace is necessarily the good system. In other words, I think sprawl and smart growth are very, very uh, you know, inefficient and in some cases corrupt systems. So that's why I choose to distance myself from those two and I've created my own system. But, but don't get me wrong. I do, however, believe that both systems have a few strengths. Now, smart growth's actions are not that great, but here's where they get it right. We have to do transit. We have to do mixed use and high density. Their transit sucks. Their mixed-use projects are not good. You've seen these mixed-use projects. They're like these bloated, boxy, monstrous buildings. That's not the way to do it. And you see the transit, Metrolink, light rail. These are inefficient. They're not going to give you the real deal. So that's why I'm not in favor of that. The other thing about smart growth, they say don't spread out. We have to create some invisible wall around our metropolitan areas. Have you heard about that? Uh, I mean, I Urban know growth I, boundaries. Yeah, growth. yeah. I mean, I know what that is. I, yeah. Okay, I disagree with, with the, them on that. No urban growth boundaries, but you have to spread out differently. You have to make it more efficient. Okay, so this is where we may disagree with smart growth. So some of the problems they address, I agree. And I agree that you have to do high density and transit, but the way they're doing it, their actual plans are not good. They don't taste great. And that's how I distinguish myself from them. Uh, sprawl, it's another crummy system, very car dependent, very, very inefficient, environmental problems. Gas prices go high, there's a lot of problems. These are neighborhoods, the neighbors don't know each other, there's a lack of beauty. Look at the old cities. Old cities are very beautiful, but sprawl, the ones that were built after the 1920s, 
they're just very boring and uninteresting places to be. And I think we're going to have to fundamentally change. So do you get my stance on the whole system? Well, yeah, I do. I mean, I don't necessarily think you're incorrect, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um, I, I believe everything I say when I, you know, the things that I say. Mm -hmm. But what I, I guess what differs me from a lot of people, especially on YouTube, mm -hmm. is, you know, I, I recognize that there is a construct that we have to live under. And mm -hmm. I might not necessarily agree with that. So, like, okay. I'll, I'll just give you an example. So, this is kind of mm -hmm. a little off topic, but I think it, it works. So, uh, there's somebody that I, I talk to on YouTube, and they're they're fairly prominent. And uh, we, I wouldn't say we got in an argument about this, but uh, they, they kept getting in trouble for some of the content they were posting. And uh, I kept telling them, I said, don't talk about that. And they said, oh, you want me to censor myself? I said, no. I said, I don't want you to censor mm -hmm. yourself. And, and the topic was Sandy Hook. I don't know if you're aware of the whole Honor Network and all that stuff where they kept coming in and taking channels down and taking down all the videos. Are you aware of that with the Sandy Hook and the Honor Network? Well, whatever happened with Sandy Hook, I, I want to protect and preserve the Second Amendment. That's all I yeah, have to okay. say. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know, I'm not saying anything one way or the other. I'm just saying that... Uh, there was this I don't I don't really not even explain what honor network is but basically uh, one of the the I guess it's one of the dads of, of the kids they say that died uh, he was going around and he was basically flagging every video about Sandy Hook and it got to a point to where you literally could not talk about it like you would get your channel taken down if you even talked about, like if you made a video with it in the title so this particular person you know I, I told them, I said, so, just don't talk about it. I said, if you want to talk about Sandy Hook, I said, make your own website where you're not dealing with YouTube and, mm -hmm. and talk about it there because YouTube has set up a system where if you talk about that, they're going to take you down. And I think you're better off having a channel because some people just say, oh, I don't care. I'm going to just take my chances. I I'm going to, you know, I, I don't care. I, I, I you know, they, they're not going to censor me. It's like, well, yeah, they are. So I guess what I'm getting at is, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Who censored you? No, no, no. It's not anybody censored me. I'm saying this person that I was talking to, they were getting a lot of harassment on YouTube. like Because, they, they, you know, you get three strikes, they take you down. So they had gotten two strikes in a very short period of time for making videos that had Sandy Hook in the title. And I just said, I said, stop doing that. I said, because I said, you know what's going to happen if you keep making these videos. They're going to take you down. And I said, you're better off if you if you mm -hmm. don't make these videos at all. I said, if you really if you really if you must talk about this, make mm -hmm. your own website and then talk about it. YouTube has set up a system where they're not going to allow you to talk about that. And if you want to be on YouTube, you have to operate within their construct. Oh, but, but isn't isn't it YouTube? I mean, do whatever you want. It's you who's making. Oh yeah, your no. Own. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, no, I I agree, and that's kind of the point that I'm. And there's I, also a Vimeo too. I mean, you could always do go there. Yeah, I mean, well, and, and that's kind of the point that I'm I'm trying to make is, I, I, ten years ago, I would have never said that. I would have been one of the people that said, no, screw YouTube. I'm gonna make whatever I want, and screw them if they take me down. But you know, to me, I'd rather have a 20,000 subscriber YouTube channel than not have one. So if they set up a parameter where they say, well, you can't talk about this or we're taking you down. Well, I don't want to be taken down. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like that, that's assuming I want to operate on their system. So the point that I'm making is, well, we live in the same area, basically. I mean, not in the same city, but same general area. So in our area, the current mm -hmm. design, as you're saying, is sprawl. It is car centric. Yes. And, and, and in my opinion, that system is better than what's being proposed. And I would rather live in our current system than what they're proposing. Okay. Now, my, my, my big thing that I really have a problem with is if, uh, you know, they're spending tons of money on the sustainability stuff, whether you're talking about windmills mm -hmm. or renewable energy, solar power. Right. Whatever, right. whatever it is that they're interrupt. I just I'm looking at this guy that you have really criticized a lot. I've seen him in my own naked eye as well. Hassan from uh, Skag, Southern yeah, California Hassan Association. Akrata. I'm looking him up right now. He's you know he's this uh, guy with this like Afro white hair and 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 but but go ahead. So well anyway, just... so what I'm getting at mm -hmm. is. Um, <laughs> If you know they're spending a lot of money doing this stuff to to change our system, mm 
Mm -hmm. If they were like the way I see it is this, you know, we're close to the same age. So when we were growing up, you know, we, we grew up in the early or the late 20th century and I, you could have not, you could, I would have never believed that the 21st century would be dom dominated by bikes and buses. That that was just like, I, I agree. I would yeah. have never imagined that. So, yeah, you know. But but hold on, let me finish. So if mm -hmm. they, if they wanted to, let's Sorry. say they, they had an idea to where they said we're gonna phase out automobiles and gasoline, mm -hmm. and we have uh, this new technology where you don't use those things, but you can get somewhere faster and quicker and it's more efficient i'd say let's get rid of these cars because you know to me it's not about me loving cars i just think that's the best thing that we have right now and i don't see them improving upon that i i see them going backwards and so that's yeah. why i have the opinions that i do and what i had that long drawn out thing about youtube the current construct as it is is sprawl car centric at least here in southern california Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to deal with. I mean, we're not, we're not, this is not going to change anytime soon. I mean, probably not in our lifetimes. I mean, it, it's going to take a a major undertaking if they were to completely do something different. So that, right. that that's how I operate. I'm operating with what we're given and what we're dealing with. And well, uh, let me l go ahead. Finish. Oh, uh, well, I was just going to say, like, and I don't want to change the subject. I have, but like, I have a zillion thoughts. Yeah, but I'm so sorry. I. Yeah. I need to get a pen and a paper to write them all down. Cause well, there's a lot of people that are out there and, and, and they comment on my videos every day and, you know, and I don't, you know, whatever. I'm not, you know, bagging on anybody, but I think there's a lot of people that, that they, they essentially live in a fantasy and that, you know, I'll put up a video and they'll say, oh, well, you have to declare yourself a sovereign citizen and say you're not part of the, 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 the corporation construct that is your city and da 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 and I'm mm -hmm. just like, well, you know, and, and, they, and they'll talk about anarchy and having no government and all this stuff. And, yeah, hey, I'll be honest. I mean, uh, if two years from now we could be in a system where government was massively shrinked down to almost nothing to where we, where we basically were anarchy, mm -hmm. that, that I could live with that. I'm fine with that. But the, but the way things are right now with borders, with nations, you know, nation states, and, and just all mm -hmm. of that, uh, mm -hmm. In my opinion, I, I believe we're hundreds of years away from even touching anarchy. And, and because I believe that, it's it's like, it, to me, there's no point in even, how should I say it, you know, like pushing that. Because it's just, it's just not going to happen. Like, we're so far away from that. So, as I keep saying, our current construct is government, and I don't like it. But it's mm -hmm. what we have to deal. It, it, it would be like, you know, let's like take like Donald Trump, for example. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's a billionaire businessman. You know, in mm -hmm. order to do to do that, to be a billionaire businessman, you have to operate within the construct that is our country, the government and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It's like so, you know, you, you just you have to just deal with what we're given. So that that's my whole point on this stuff with the cars and sprawl. It's not so much that. I, I love sprawl and that I love cars and I, you know, mm -hmm. it's just to me, it's the best system with what we have right now because right. Okay. I, I've lived, I've lived in a couple. I'll let you finish up yeah, in 30 I'm seconds. I'm almost done. I, 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 I have to, yeah. but I have to because I, I really have to bring this thought before. Yeah, no, that's I fine. All I'm going to say is I, I lived in a couple of other places around the country where they were more pedestrian oriented. So mm -hmm. I, I've, I've lived like that. That, that's mm -hmm. part of why I have my opinion because I've, I've been there, done that, and, mm -hmm. I, and I've also been here, done that, and I, I know the difference of the two, and it sucks having to wait for buses. It sucks waiting for subways. It sucks having to ride bikes. Like, I've done all that stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I would rather, I'd rather sit in traffic than wait for a bus. Anyway, that's all I am. Um... Well, first of all, I just want to say about the transit options. The problem, I have addressed this before, the problem is in transit entirely is is flawed the subways the the buses i get what you're talking about they're not good systems i would not want to trade off my car but if the transit was a personal rapid transit i suggest you research skytran and j pods these are very innovative technologies i think they've been around for years and decades if you research urban maglev they have it in china if you research the hyperloop i'm sure you've heard of that um, those technologies are the technologies that would make me want to forget my car and even the airplane, by the way, and use those instead of that. So I think the problem is in the transit is, is bad. It's just that, you know, 
it's just what we're offered is not good. You know, it's like saying, you know, there are fruits and vegetables and, you know, it, and, and I'm not buying them. It's, it's not because necessarily I'm an unhealthy dieting person. It's because maybe the fruits are, are, are non-organic or something like that. So it's, it all matters about what types you, you get. But here's what I think. This is my piece of advice, and this is where I th think it could really help you. You have to address the people that want transit, that want high density, that want pedestrian oriented. And this is where I think it's going to blow your mind. I think the problem with sprawl is that you can make really, I can't say the suburbs, let's just say areas dominated with single family homes. Because at the end of the day, what people really want is a single family home with not too much noise and a good amount of space. Am I correct? Okay. We, we live in this because, you see, you have to understand, people live in the suburbs isn't because they like everything about it. They live in it because it's our limited choices. Because all the walkable areas are too crowded, they're too crime infested, or they're too expensive. I mean, there are walkable areas right by the beach. Laguna Beach, Balboa Island, but they're very, very expensive. And we don't have that because the planners for decades wouldn't provide it to us, the developers and so forth. So my suggestion is that, you see, and, I, and, and, and this is where I might disagree with you. I do think the suburbs and, and our lifestyle can change. I do think it can be walkable and transit oriented. But here's where I do agree with you. The idea that single family homes are going to be dominant, that is where I agree with you. And this is the best compromise we can do. I suggest that we provide small town environments where they're dominated by single family homes. By the way, I have designs, by the way, I can show you neighborhoods with 90% single family homes and they're very pedestrian oriented and they have a, a personal rapid transit. They, they could really work. This is the best compromise. So what I'm suggesting is you have to provide an alternative to the people that hate the sprawl car dependent system that's better than what SCAG and Smart Growth is doing. So you create that alternative, the people jump on that boat, and then the, the system that you, know, you don't like, that Hassan and all these other people are promoting, they'll start to sink, and then their foundation will start to crumble. Or they're gonna have to change. Otherwise, you know, they're just because you gotta understand these people have a lot of support behind their backs, especially the people that live in like I would say L.A. and all these inner areas, Long Beach, you know, Anaheim, and so forth. But you have to provide an alternative. You have to say that these infill development projects you got to do it differently. Their design, their subsidies, it's unacceptable. We have to provide a different type of transit. This metro link, this metro rail is a joke. It's a waste of our money. Figure out, because, look, there are people that want transit. You can't just say, shut up and go away, and cars rule the day. You can't say that. I hope you agree with that. Am I correct? No, I, I, think, I think transit has a place. I'm not saying there shouldn't be any transit. Okay, but what I'm saying is you have to provide an alternative that works for all of us and that can get the the people that want to live differently than you on your side because that's how you, in other words you have to create a boycott movement you, you go back to i don't know the uh montgomery bus boycott i don't know if you remember that or heard of it or whatever you know what i'm talking about montgomery bus boycott where you know rosa parks and martin luther king were upset that People had to give up their seat for somebody that was a different looking person and then they boycott the buses. And, you know, this is what I'm saying. You have to create your own alternative. That's all I have to say. So how are you going to address the people that want transit and high density development? And how is your plan different than what SCAG is proposing? Go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, as I just said right now, you know, I'm I'm not entirely against. I mean, I live in an apartment right now. I mean, that's what you're looking at, uh, you know, behind me. So I mean, I'm not entirely anti. Not me. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm not entirely anti. I mean, I live in an apartment, but it's not one of these big, you know, hundred unit stack and pack. You know, I mean, there's only I only have I only have a few neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, but my whole issue with all of this stuff is it, it basically free market. I mean, if the free market was dictating that we're going to ride buses and ride trains and live in apartments, you mm. know, I, I probably wouldn't even be doing this. But, you know, mm. my, my whole thing is, you know, everything's being funded by grant money. It's all coming down from the state of California or even the federal government, oh, yeah. depending on whatever. Yeah. So that's kind of where I, I, I get, you know, upset about this stuff because I, I don't want to be told how I'm going to live. I mean, if I was in a huge minority – of people and, and I and I was the way I am but you know most people wanted to live the way I was against and and then and then the free market acted towards that I would just I would just deal with it um mm. I I just uploaded a, a video uh, it's like almost two hours long and it's it's essentially uh everything not everything but it's almost it's a lot of what we've been recording for the last couple of years and there was a clip that I left out of it and um I wanted to put it in, but I just couldn't find a place to put it to have it, you know, mesh well. But what it was is it was a a speaker that I recorded, and he had said that he had stumbled onto like old tablets from ancient Sumeria, and the 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 ta it was like um, I guess they had taken a census back then in old in ancient Sumeria, and the the tablets had said that eighty percent of people back then lived in single family type dwellings. And then 20% lived in like the towering apartment types. And that's how it's been for thousands of years. I mean, that's basically been the norm. So that's kind of, that's the point I'm making is the, the free market says that. Wait, 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 excuse me. You said that for centuries, 80% of the population lived in single family homes and 20% lived in. Well, it, 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 it was a preference. I, I I have to go back and see what he said, but it, 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 he basically said they, they prefer. Well, I, I like that preference. I think it's a good reasonable preference because I like single family homes too. Well, yeah. Anyway, if what I am saying is 100% correct that over the, thou over the millennia that it's been at 80% and it's been very consistent, which I believe it has been, well, they're now telling us that our generation is going to change that, that we're bucking that trend. And I, I just don't buy that. I, I don't, because I mean, I, I'm 31. And, I partially agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm 31 and every person I know that's around my age is trying to buy a house right now or saving up or whatever it is that they're doing something along those lines. Like, I don't know anybody that's, that's like striving to live in a $2,000 rental apartment with mm -hmm. hundreds of neighbors like i don't know anybody that wants to do that i'm not saying they're not yeah. out there i mean i know they're out there but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just saying that um i i, I just these the, all these things that we're seeing it's not free market and, and that i mean i believe in the free market you know whether you want to call it capitalism or something else i mean uh mm -hmm. you know i've always been an entrepreneur for a long time and mm -hmm. you know sometimes i have failed sometimes i have succeeded and uh, i i wouldn't have it any other way so i don't know if i really answered what you were asking but i mean mm -hmm. and, and let me just say one more thing too about the transit um I, I i do believe it has a place i mean i i definitely would not want to not have it at all because i mean you know that is kind of screwed up if there was no other option besides a car because obviously not everybody can drive i mean that's you know pretty obvious but there was a, a video i had done a couple months ago i went to uh, one of skag's stupid you know, where they have the poster boards and, you know, you walk around and they have their people who tell you what the poster board is. Mm -hmm. And on the poster board, uh, and this is me saying this, it's not, didn't, the poster board didn't say this, but basically it was the eight options you're going to have after there's no more cars, right? And I think one of them was toll lanes. And so when I brought that up, they're like, oh, well, this is your, your car option. I'm like, oh, toll lanes, right? Which I'm like, screw that. I don't want to drive around in toll lanes. But what I told the guy was, I said, you do realize that every option that you have on this board is somehow involved with the government. I said, all of these are a service. So when you take the bus somewhere, you're, you're getting on a service. When I get in my car to go somewhere, that's not a service. That's my car. And so that, that's kind of my whole thing about this is to me, I mean, if you if you must take a bus, then, you know, I, I understand if you must take a bus. But I, in my opinion, well, I, I think buses are inefficient. I mean, sorry to interrupt, but I, well, I think buses, it's just, 
it's just a very yeah. unattractive system i mean I, and it's a very outdated technology yeah I mean, my, my big my big issue with the buses and the subways and all that is you, you're essentially relying on someone else to get you somewhere and i don't want to yeah, but, but i'm sorry my my point is what about um uh what about the argument that people say that uh when you're on cars you're driving on public right of way and even the parking lots are subsidized by the government because you got to understand, though, that, you know, even though you're driving private vehicles, you are still technically um, uh, you are you're still technically on public infrastructure or subsidized infrastructure. Yeah, well, and that goes along with what I said said earlier. I mean, you know, this is the construct that we that we have. I mean, uh, if you know, if I could drive on something that's not, you know, a road like you're saying, I probably would. But uh, mm -hmm. even with that, the fact is I could get in my car and I could drive to the East Coast right now. Uh, you know, if I wanted to get on a bus or a train or whatever, you know, I I'm having to rely on someone else to do that for me. And, and I, that's just, I just don't want to do that. I don't want to rely on someone else. I want to rely right. only on. So, for example, like if something bad happens while I'm driving my car, let's say I crash into a tree, that's my fault. You know, mm -hmm. if, if the bus driver gets stoned, and crashes into a pole well you know what i mean like i i don't want to be in a position where you know your your life it's like it's like when you get on a plane when you get on a plane your life is in that pilot's hands i mean you could die on that plane if mm -hmm. I, I mean i could die in my car i'd rather die in my car but, but, but sorry to interject what if what if like what if you're driving on the highway and the pavement is so bad and the roads are icy you know and and you may jeopardize your life because still you rely on the weather and the condition of the road for your safety yeah i mean uh, to me i i would just say i mean that's just a part of life i mean uh, but i get your point yeah yeah go ahead. i mean it's just like when it rains here because it doesn't rain that much here when it does rain the roads get really crappy because it hasn't rained in a long time whenever it does rain and you know it's just I guess the way I'd put it is like this, you know, you we I, we have two options at this point. Well, it's not even mm -hmm. that we have them at this point. It's just that there's two lines of thought, may, you know, may, main lines of thought. I guess you could say, what I would like to live under is what I call, and I'm not, I didn't invent this term, but what I call dangerous freedom, and then the other side is safe security. And under dangerous freedom, I could get into my car and I might kill myself on an icy road. Like I'm willing to take that risk, whereas if everything mm -hmm. is is safe and oh the government and we're you know we're gonna take you here and we're gonna get mm -hmm. you there safely, like I don't want mm -hmm. that, you know, because mm -hmm. cause then it leads into other things. Like one of the one of the things that I've theorized for a while, I, I think the reason why they want us all on a bus is because you know you've, you've heard of the Transportation Security Administration, the TSA. Well, they have said that they take the transportation part of their name very seriously and they eventually want to be in all aspects of transportation so i you know when they talk about oh by 2035 in my opinion i believe by 2035 if they are allowed to do whatever they want i think mm -hmm. you'll be getting tsa every single day to get on that bus and that's I, what i heard several years ago i heard that um they're going to have tsa agents um, in the bus. And then what's really um, frightening about that is that they may even spy on what you're doing in the bus. So may, they may hear your con conversation. Yeah, well, that, that's so, already going on. I, I was in Vegas a couple of years ago and it, those, the buses in Vegas are spooky. Like they, like they literally have, um, it's like a little cartoon, like on the ceiling <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. eyeballs. And it, it, like, it says something like we're watching or mm -hmm. something. And mm -hmm. then, and then on the wall, it says mm -hmm. this bus is being audio and video recorded, so they're, and they're already doing. They're already doing, and that's another reason why I don't want to be on a bus. I don't want to. Yeah, but, but don't they do it because of safety? Like somebody attacks you or beats um, you up. Well, I'm, or... I'm sure that's the. I'm sure that's their reason. Why? Same same reason why they'd want to put TSA to get on a bus. It's for your safe. Everything's for your safety. But like right. I said, but how do we know? Like, let's say if somebody steals something from you and the bus is, bus driver doesn't see anything. How do we know who who did it? Because, I mean, you. St I mean, so you have to have, like I said, an alternative. So, uh, but I get your point. Very good. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, well, let me, let me answer that real quick. I mean, we could go into a super deep conversation about this, and this kind of goes along with this whole idea <laughs> of just changing society. 
But uh, and this isn't going to happen tomorrow. But mm-hmm. I mean, if they're up to me, you know, we'd be raising a different society. You know what I mean? Like everyone's so scared and everyone's, you know, the kids are, I mean, I, you know, I, I know, you know, I think we all know some kids. Like I know some kids, they don't know how to do anything now. I mean, kids can't do anything anymore. Like they, they all they know how to do is be on their phone and text and, and all that stuff. Oh, and, yeah. Um, so to answer your question about if somebody, you know, stole something from you, you know, on the bus, well, you know, in my ideal society, that person's going to know how to deal with that situation. I mean, you know, they're going to know how to defend themselves. You know, they're, they're not going to just sit there and go, oh, he stole from me. You know, I mean, they're going to take it into their own hands. And it's not, it's not going to work every time. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, a you of, know. A lot of young people are lacking skills, which, by the way, a lot of them are, you know, graduating with degrees and not having any skills or any knowledge of how to do anything that's, you know, contributing, and which is kind of the problem we have. But that's, again, another topic. But um I think, you know, part of the problem why a lot of people don't want to live in apartments, we wanted to address this earlier. I don't think it's because people don't like apartments necessarily. It's because the attached units we provide are not very pretty. I mean, if you look at the historical buildings we used to build like 100 years ago, 150 years ago, they're really nice buildings. So the quality and the you know and and the services and amenities that it provides around is not that great but here's the other problem many of those apartments are very expensive and what we're finding out in every major city in America that's having some renewal or it's you know it's like an interesting downtown to walk in it's pretty expensive and but so then i guess from a supply and demand economic standpoint, shouldn't we build more apartments then? Well, that's what that's what they've been saying. They've been well because that's their whole philosophy. When I say they, I guess the planners, but I, I've read it a lot where they say yes. But but sorry to interject, but this is where I may disagree with them. Increase supply in the inner areas, but also allow it make it easier to increase supply on the outside. So that way we have a real system that meets real demand you know it's more market oriented but go ahead do you agree um well yeah i mean i mean i don't i don't want to put apartments everywhere but i mean uh and based on you know the fundamental of what you're saying i don't think you're incorrect but i i'm just saying that um oh, i kind of lost my thought um well the the, the 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 yeah the planners their whole philosophy is oh we just if we just build and build and build and build uh, the, you know, the prices will go down. Well, at, up to this point, that hasn't happened. The more they build, the more expensive it gets. But mm-hmm. there's, there, there's a few reasons for that. You know, they're not just building apartments. They're building apartments that cost millions extra because of sustainability, because of taxes, because of, you know, developer fees. You know, I mean, they're not, they're oh, not just... How, how does it make it more expensive, though? Okay, like, so for example... Sorry. Okay, so for example, uh, I I don't know the numbers offhand. This this happened quite some time ago. I mm-hmm. I was I was at I was at my at the city council in the city I live in uh, last year. Uh, they voted to raise developer fees on 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 new develop on new buildings. You know, if you wanted to build a new building, and so the number was something like, if you wanted to basically mm-hmm. build one of these stack and packs mm-hmm. before you even put a shovel in the ground. You had to pay the city like three million dollars in developer fees. Holy crap! And, 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 well, so that's why the rent is so expensive. Well, that, and it's also why the cities are embracing this because they they see it as a windfall. They're just like, if we approve this building, like I'll give you an even better example. I don't. Um, a few months back, we were up in Hesperia. They're they're doing this project called the Tapestry Project. And they're basically doubling the size of the city. So they have this big, you know, desert area out there where it's just all open space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're going to completely develop it. Well, I, I, once again, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was absurd. I think the developer, because they've been trying to do this for like 20 years. And this developer finally said, okay, here's the deal. They said something like, we'll give you $12 million up front if you, if you let us build this project. And the city said, yeah, go ahead. And so th- that's the two reasons. So the reasons why it's so expensive is the developer fees. Well, mm-hmm. that, that's why the cities are doing it, is, is what I'm trying to say. They're doing it because they see it as a windfall, and then that's why it's so expensive. So over here down the street from me, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're just opening this big, giant, you know, 450-unit 
thing mm-hmm. like two minutes from my house mm-hmm. and somebody uh, who was critical of me, he was saying that he just signed, cause I was criticizing this place. He's like, well, I just signed a lease. And I said, well, how much are you paying? He said 2,500. Well, I, and, and, and his apartment is the same size as mine. I pay 900. And, you know, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Like, you, you guys, are, that's going to make my rent go up. Because if my landlord finds out that just down the street, they're paying, they're, they're paying, <laughs> they're paying triple. What? Well, no, th- this is what I'm getting at. Like, there, so you should fight the city council. Oh, I have. I mean, that, that's what my whole YouTube channel is about. But what I'm saying is, like, right now there's an average rent. In you this... could sue these people. Well, uh, that's we're trying. I mean, <laughs> believe me, like that's where there's a lot going on with this stuff. But there's an average rent in the city, and I, I don't even know what that number is. It could be a thousand. It could be twelve hundred. Whatever <laughs> it is, right? I I know I pay below the average because I I moved here like six years ago, and my rent hasn't gone up. So, and, and when I first moved here. It was it was about like average for what you would pay for what I what I got. Well, it, my landlords never raised me, and rents have gone up, so I'm I'm below the average now. If the average is let's say is eleven hundred and I pay nine, well, m- we're being told in my city they're gonna add twenty thousand new residents, and they gotta go somewhere. They gotta be put somewhere. So if if they put them all in apartments, and the average mm-hmm. apartment new apartments twenty to twenty five hundred dollars. Well, that might uh-huh. raise the average rent in the city to eighteen hundred dollars or nineteen or whatever it is. Well, eventually my landlord is going to find out that the rent's gone up by that much, and he might say, "Okay, pay me fifteen hundred dollars a month now," and, and I, you know I'm not going to live here anymore <laughs> if it's if it's fifteen hundred dollars a month. I agree. So, so, so then, how do you? So then, how do you make? Which begs the question. Well, okay, well, we'll we'll, um, we'll, we'll probably uh, talk about this. Or, or no, we can we can talk about it now. So then, how do you make the area more affordable? Then, what do you do? Because do you increase supply in a different fashion? Do you stop the projects? Because if you stop the projects and you have all these people that want to move in, it's still going to raise the bids for the rent. Well, I mean, you know, as I said, I mean, I I just say let the free market take care of everything. I mean, it, like so. Let's. I, I don't own property. I mean, I, I you know I wish I did, but I don't. So like, if I own property, let's say I own a house that was half a million dollars, mm-hmm. you know, as a property owner, I would not want them, you know, building more to accommodate extra people because the way I so my city has like a hundred hundred thousand or so population. Mm-hmm. Well, if a hundred and fifty thousand people want to live here then that will drive up automatically the price of property or the price of, you know, the real estate. Mm-hmm. And so as a property owner, I would say don't build anything, you know, cause I want my property value to go up. Now it, where I live, the whole city's built out. There's, there's nowhere to build, but up. So that, that, that's, that's their, exactly. that, that's their only, exactly. but that's, that's, that's one of the, sorry to interrupt. That's why one of the reasons why California is pretty expensive because all the good land is gone. Well, uh, yeah, and that's that. See, and that's the one thing. Where, well, actually, I do. The one thing I do disagree with you on is, um, I'm not necessarily against sprawl. I mean, I don't necessarily have a big problem with it, but uh, you know, well, it depends on what you mean by sprawl. Like yeah. spreading out, I'm I'm okay with that. It's well, how we spread yeah, out. Well, that's, that's what I was gonna say. See, this is, you know, about a year ago, I uh, I didn't, I never did it, but I thought of making a Facebook page called uh, Resuburbanize America. And the whole idea was, uh, I think I don't know the exact numbers, but I think it's something like ninety percent of the land is open space. Like we, we don't like most of, most of this entire country is the way it was when they first found it. It's still I agree. It's still I forest, agree. deserts, you know, whatever whatever it is that's out there. And you know, now to the conservationists, you know, the, oh my God, you can't develop on that land. Well, I say this: I, I don't want to develop on pristine land either. But I don't think it would be the end of the world if only 85% of that land was undeveloped. Because, I mean, so what if if, if we develop 5%? I'm not saying to develop all of it, but oh, when, yeah. when you consider that, like, I mean, I don't. if you've ever traveled across this country, like like through a car mm-hmm. or like on a train, because I, I've, I once took a train across the entire country, and I was shocked at how big our country really is. Like by just mm-hmm. being, be, it took us, it took seven days on a train to, go across this country in two days just in texas alone like i can't i couldn't believe how massive texas was 
-hmm. and almost and and this is and this is part of why I have these opinions because I saw this on this trip, mm -hmm. and I was like, mm -hmm. the whole country is empty, and and, yeah. and, and instead of saying, like, oh, please don't move to Texas, we need you here. <laughs> No, no, we no, need I, you here because, you know, I know you, you've thought about moving to Texas because it's not as messed up. But I tell you and my friend Thomas, don't move. Don't leave California. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. Yeah. No, no, because we need, we need no, people to kick some ass. I'm going to say. Because that's what they want. They want, you to, they want you to leave. I think, you know, the people like Jerry Brown know that the things they're doing, they're, they're scaring you away. Yeah, no, I know. I'm going to stay here as long as I possibly can. I mean, I, I will leave if I have to, but I mean, uh, like for example, if they, if they, <laughs> if, if, if tomorrow they come out and say, Hey, 2017, January, you know, we're mandatory vaccinating everybody, you know, with 50 shots uh, a year, you know, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not sticking around for that. <laughs> You know that that's well. They did. They. I, I don't know if you've heard. They some of the public schools. I think in California. Yeah. Well, they well, no, did, I, yeah. I know the schools did it, but I mean, I don't go to public school, so I mean, it doesn't. I mean, I I'm not for that, but I mean, uh, that doesn't necessarily affect me directly. So uh -huh. I'm just saying, like, I do have my line in the sand, and I mean, I'm gonna stay as long as I can. But uh, just what I was saying is there. There's just so much. Like, if if they were to say, because uh, you know, when when they first settled this country, they basically said, you know, throw a stake in the ground. And, you know, you put in two stakes, that, that's your property, basically. And people try to get as much as they could. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that they should just give away free land like that. But I'm saying if, if they said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to out, whether it be California or Arizona or just somewhere that's just fully open. If they said, we, we've taken this exact square and we're going to build a brand new city that doesn't exist yet. And it's going to be all new. Like everything's like brand new. Yes, I, I, I'd, I'd be willing to go settle that, you know, I mean, which is I, on, which, what I'm planning to do. Later yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it'd be fun and exciting to do something like that. But see, they, they say you can't do that because, oh, conservation, you know, we got to preserve the land, blah, 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 blah. See, to mm -hmm. me, the, the whole like, see, like I said, I live in an apartment and I actually like to I like this apartment. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't hate like I'll ask you this. Have you have you ever lived in an apartment with like hundreds of people in it? In apartment complex? Yeah, like where there's like hundreds of people, where you have like hundreds of neighbors. Have you ever lived in one of those? In one building? Or yeah, or in, yeah, yeah. In, like in one building, you have hundreds of neighbors. Okay, not well. Um, well, the apartment I lived in at one point, there wasn't hundreds of people. It was a it was like multi-acre complex with many buildings in it, two-story, okay. three-story. Yeah, well, uh, okay. that doesn't really count. Yeah, well, I, I've never okay. The closest I've been to a stack and pack is it was my college dormitory that basically was a stack and pack. Uh -huh. But oh yeah, I I once lived in an apartment complex. It was only two stories, but it had like probably a hundred units, and it, it was all in like one building, basically like one long like it was kind. Of, it's kind of hard to describe the way the building was, but mm. I only I lived there for a very short time, and when I lived there. You know, I just was like, wow, I can't, I don't know why anybody would want to live like this. Like my neighbor, mm -hmm. well, I had like, I, I shared walls with like six different people. So I remember one of my neighbors, they had a newborn baby. And so I had to hear the baby crying every night. And then mm -hmm. I had another, and then the, on the opposite wall, uh, mm -hmm. that neighbor, I, I, I don't know, I don't know if they talked loud or, or what, but I would actually hear their full conversations in my living room, like what they were saying to whoever they were talking to. So, yeah. So I had the, oh, yeah. I, I had the baby crying. I had mm -hmm. the full conversations going on on the other wall, and then upstairs they had small like kids that were like three and four, like that age, and they would they would run they would always, they were always running in the run. house. Yeah. And so I had the pitter pattering on the ceiling, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. it, it, it gets worse. There's two more things. Then there was there was a gate that went out to the parking lot. Well, that gate was attached to my bedroom wall, and so every time people came in and out. And, and nobody was courteous. They would just let the gate slam. They wouldn't, like, just close it. They would let it slam. That that gate would shake my whole, like, little world that I lived in. And it would scare the crap out of me. It would just be like, boom! I'd be like, oh! You know? And, and I just, I, it, was, it was awful. And then the last thing, the, yeah. every time my, my upstairs neighbor took a shower or flushed the toilet, the, you the, heard it. the, the, the pipes in, in, in my wall would be like, <sighs> And it was like this loud, oh, loud. Oh. So like, if they took like a fifteen minute shower, like I, I wouldn't even be able to watch TV because I have to wait for them to stop taking their shower. And so when I see these big buildings going up, I, I'm just like, I've already. Well, I didn't live in that exact setting, but I kind of know how it is. And like when you have hundreds <laughs> of neighbors, like it's just, it, it's terrible. I mean, 
And uh, that's mm -hmm. why when they talk about these young kids wanting to, you know, live like this, I'm thinking, well, there are probably are some that do. And, and it's not and it's not that I wanted to live like well, that, that's, but but there was but there was a time that I did, and it got old really fast, and and they're talking about you know because once these buildings go up, they're not going to come down. Like you know, once it's up, it's there to stay. So, you know that you cannot make this mistake of building this thing and and then it fails. You know because then it's <laughs> like you know you spent all this money, nobody lives in it. You know, so it's just I mean I could go. It's kind of long winded, but. That's just yeah. kind of my thing on this whole apartment, uh, you know, issue. The apartment I live in now is not like that at all. I sure I only have one wall. I share one wall with a neighbor, and the guy's quiet. So it's not, you know, it, it, it's it's very calm and relaxing. My only issue is I got the freeway outside, but I chose to live next to that freeway, so I don't I don't let that bother me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did actually live in a big complex uh, until I was four years old in a neighborhood called Sherman Oaks. Um, it was in the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, I know Sherman Oaks. Yeah, and uh, it was actually it's part of the city of Los Angeles, by the way. Uh, it's somewhat of a suburban, urban. Um, yeah, I know, I know the area. It's a really big city area. Shopping centers can be more than one story. Uh, I think majority of the people don't live in single family homes. Uh, buildings uh, over 10 stories are are you know, not so un unusual. Uh, so, so, it, you know, it, I, I, I've sort of been in that situation. Um, although I, I hardly remember it cause I was a little toddler cause I, I can't remember it too much, but I, I get what you are really talking about. Now, this is one thing we may disagree with. Um, you talk about the free market, right? What do you mean by the free market? Because, you know, or, or I, I, you've already explained because I want there to be antitrust laws. I so that we don't have like few companies running every sector. I want there to be you know strong private sector unions so that workers fight back and we have worker protection and things like that. I want there to be some social programs, not you know what some people are advocating that we're so dependent. Yeah, just a safety net. Yeah, you know, and some public services like schools and uh, and I, I mean healthcare. It's it's hard to say. I mean, we can discuss the details about that. Obviously, I don't like what we have now. I mean, we can both agree with that. And I do, however, uh, want regulation when it comes to now, not like some of the ones we have in the state, but I mean like some of the ones that were repealed, like the Glass Steagall Act. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah, no, I know Glass Steagall. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, that's what caused the housing crisis. I want crisis. there to be some reg – now, this is one of the flaws, in my opinion, about people like Gary Johnson is that he's not really addressing that. And that's one of the better prospects of Donald Trump's position is that, yeah, you have to have some freedom. But on the other hand, it's like you know, you also have to keep in mind is that you, there has to be some protection. OK, so when it comes to planning, I don't really know exactly what the free market is. Yes. Do I want, you know, the private sector to be remain in control? Yes. But can we have some restrictions? Yes. But now what about the restrictions you're talking about? No, not really. I don't I don't I don't think some of the restrictions that they're doing is all that great. So uh, that's one of the things I wanted to clear up. And, and and one of the things, one of the strengths about Bernie Sanders I want to talk about and Jill Stein uh, is that I don't agree with everything they stand for, but where they do get it right is that I don't like to have an economy where the CEO makes 400 times more than the average worker, where back in like the 1960s and 70s, it used to be 20, 30 times the average worker. So... You have to do something about that. You have to address inequality, otherwise the system is not going to really work. As well, a lot of a lot of the reason why that CEO uh, salary thing is um, is out of control is a lot of it has to do with trade the jobs policy going, and immigration. The jobs yeah. going overseas, uh huh, you know, and it, immigration cause, too. Because you know, if let's say you're making a pair of Nikes and it only costs a dollar to make them or whatever it costs, and you sell them for a hundred. There was probably a time where it cost twenty to twenty dollars to make them, and you know, you sold them for a hundred. You know, you're making a hundred times profit versus five times profit here in the U.S. 
So, I mean, uh, I, I'm not an expert on this topic of uh, the whole CEO salary thing, but mm-hmm. uh, that that's why I believe uh, why we see a lot of that. But I want to I want to talk to you about the uh, the, uh, the free market thing with the, the developers and all that. So the way mm-hmm. uh, so a- as it stands right now, what we what we are seeing uh, in the local cities here uh, is, ba- is just basic fascism. So. What's going on is, so let's say like the city council, they'll say, okay, we want to have a, a plan, right? We want to have a new plan that we, you know, that, that for, for whatever, right? So they have these these silly Delphi meetings where they come in and they manipulate the public. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it's, it's absolutely disgraceful. I mean, like these meetings, I mean, I've been to so many of them. And in a way, it, it, it can be fun if you get in the right setting. But overall, it's pretty awful. So the way these meetings go is you know you'll be lucky if you get 20 people to show up Uh, sometimes you get more if it's a larger city or you know whatever but you usually get about 20 to show up and i've been in some of these meetings where more than half of the people in the meeting are shills so here's what they do so over here not necessarily in my city but over in uh, san Bernardino county the same developer is getting all the contracts and he's building all the same stuff everywhere now, he says he's building different stuff, but he's really not. He's basically building the same stuff everywhere. So what ends up happening is, and it's funny because they're actually somewhat transparent about this. Like, I've been in meetings where they'll say, yeah, I'm a developer. And as soon as I hear that, I'm like, well, why the hell are you in this meeting in the first place? Like, you know, you don't even live in this city, yet you're here in the in, in this city meeting. So what's going on is these, these developers, they'll give input, they'll take the surveys, and they'll be part of the visioning process for the city. And so because of sustainable development, right mm-hmm. off the bat with sustainable development, you have certain parameters that you have to operate within, assuming you decide to have your plan based on that, which all the cities are already doing. Mm-hmm. So what ends up happening is, uh, how should I, I'm just trying to think how I should phrase this. What ends up happening is these developers they end up giving input in these meetings that makes them the most possible money that mm-hmm. gets written down into the plan and the city council mm-hmm. approves it. And then mm-hmm. that developer, when they finally decide to, to do their proposal or their, their project or whatever, they start building. That's not the free market. That's the exact opposite of free market. That, that is, that's why it's, it's, it's fascism because mm-hmm. you, have, you have these developers who are big business. They're coming in and they're, they're merging themselves with the yeah. city. So that's that's what I would hear from people like uh, sort of what I hear from people like uh, Tom Deweese and Rosa Corey. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard of them. Yeah. So yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. Like if we're going to really be Americans, this is how it's supposed to be. So the city council, they say we, we want to have a plan. So they, mm-hmm. they set up the meetings. Now, it, it shouldn't be a Delphi meeting, but even if it is, it's supposed like the, the developers are should be banned from these meetings. And I'm not saying that you should be banned if you don't live in the city because that, that, I wouldn't be able to go to most of my meetings. But I'm just saying, like, it, it should just be, you know, people that are going to actually have an, a, a direct effect. The plan will have yeah. an effect on their life. Mm. So throw out the developers, n- no developers whatsoever. And if now, if, now if, if it's your city and you are a developer, I mean, I think you should be welcomed in. But there's got to be a way to somehow work that out. So the way it's supposed to be is the the residents show up and and they say the kind of plan that they want because Mm -hmm. as as it stands the plans are based on sustainable development which is not what the residents want it's what the state wants and then and then when i say develop they have sb 375 to back them up yeah and and when i say when i say the developer i'm talking about you know I, I don't know this for certain, but this developer out here in San Bernardino County, I've been told he's a billionaire with a B. I, I don't know that to be true. I, I was I was kind of surprised when I heard that. I thought the guy was probably worth a couple hundred million dollars because his, his name's on every building all over the county. Like he's 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 everywhere, right? Well, a, anyway, um, Lewis? Lewis. Yeah, Randall Lewis. So anyway, oh, so it's Lewis Holmes. Well, yeah, he he's who I'm using for this example. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, I know. Is it Luis who, who 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 does he do shopping centers too? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he did Victoria Gardens yeah, and yeah. Rancho. And... Let me tell you something. Luis, um, believe it or not, is is one of the one of the largest developers in the Inland Empire. Um, and I used to live in Rancho Cucamonga. I think I've told you that before. Um, right. And the neighborhood that I lived in, and you won't believe this. Is it a Luis um, neighborhood? 
it was the same neighborhood that Luis actually had a home. Uh-huh. And I think I've seen him or one of the people actually very, very um, uh, such a proponent of this project or SB 375. I'm not really sure. But what is stunning is that if it's that same Luis, how could Luis be such a proponent when he has and is currently planning to build you know more sprawl more strip mall you know parking lot infested projects i mean how could this really work i don't get it yeah well i'll, I'll answer that i, I want to finish my example so the, the, uh-huh. the way the system is supposed to work if we're going to be americans is you have your meeting the public says what they want uh-huh. and then and then the city council approves what the public wants mm-hmm. then they're supposed to do what's called an RFP, which is a request for proposal, where they put out across the area to all the developers, this mm-hmm. is the plan that the residents have come up with. Give us a bid, and who you know the lowest bidder or whatever will win the project. And the reason why that's free market is because that allows every developer an opportunity to win the project. And that even even the smallest of developers who let's say only has a few employees, they have a shot to go in there, make their proposal, whether or not they get it. And mm-hmm. then basically the best proposal wins. But what we have right now is Randall Lewis shows up to the meeting. He gives input and says, oh, this is what I want to see in this project. And then mm-hmm. he's a he's a ward of the contract basically before it, it the, the, pro, the process is even over with. And so what's happening is in every single city, he's winning the contracts. They're, they're not doing a, a, an open bid system where they say, here's our project, you know, give us a proposal. What they're doing is because of sustainable development, they're saying, this is our plan. And now to, to give you on your question, I don't know if I'm going to answer it completely because um, I'm, I'm, not actually, I'm not entirely against Randall Lewis. I mean, he's done some really great projects and a lot of people like that the projects that he has done and he's done some very successful projects. But the reason why he's getting the projects is he can afford the developer fees. So when you have, mm-hmm. so when you have sustainability in, in, in your project, that automatically costs more money. So Where's he doing this in what particular cities? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so he just let me think. What was the city? I, he just uh, there's like there's like two cities that I'm not really involved in, but I know he just got major deals in a couple of cities. Um, mm-hmm. I know he was involved in Upland recently, which I think he lives there. Um, but what I'm getting at is, if the developer is told before they put a shovel in the ground, they got to pay five million dollars to the city for the you know for the privilege of of starting the project. Well, that's gonna um, that's gonna immediately eliminate almost every developer right off the top. So only the biggest of the big are are able to survive. Oh, okay. So, so it's a system designed to um, strip out the weak. Right, it, 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 and, and that, that's why it's fascism because basically the government is selecting the couple of, of developers they're going to allow to survive. Everyone mm-hmm. else is going to die off, and, and yeah. that's, that, that's why I'm saying like I want to see the free market. I want to see a system where I go to the meeting, I say what I want, the, the council approves it, they put mm-hmm. out their, their request for proposal, the RFP, 50 developers show up and say, here's our proposal, and then the council picks the one they like the best. That's the free market. What we have now is the opposite. They say it must be sustainability, you must pay us $5 million to start, who can pay $5 million? Oh, only one guy? Okay, he wins the project. And, and Randall Lewis... He, he see and, and see he's a smart he's a smart man he's not stupid he realizes that every that the state is forcing sustainability so he has adjusted his business to build for sustainability and so that's why he's be, kind of become this villain recently because everybody knows that he's changed his whole business you know structure recently to accommodate what the state wants and he's doing that because he wants to survive in business Mm-hmm. So he 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 he's acting in his own self interest, which yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't blame the guy. I mean, who, I, who I, would I, do I, that? I just I'm I'm stunned about hearing nobody ever really told me this very well. But wow, I just never thought uh, Luis would ever do such a thing. And to think that I probably have lived in one of his housing complexes for years, and uh, so I I think he probably hijacked this thing for 
really his you know his, his just own benefit but uh you know i don't know maybe you can i don't know confront him or whatever but i want to get into this because yeah there are like i said we've just discussed there are parts of smart growth and sustainability but we don't like but what i've addressed before is that there are some things about these people that they address some things about the Because you have to understand, sprawl is the current system. It's still the dominant system, okay? I mean, it may change pretty soon, but it's still the dominant system. It's still going on all across the country and other parts of the world. Some people don't like the sprawl system. And they say that the system for decades, on the other hand, was rigged to only build sprawl. The zoning laws, the codes, the subsidies... Well, yeah, it's like what I'm saying right now, I mean, about how it's rigged for sustainability. I mean, you might be right. right. So it's like one way or another. And they say, well, we don't like how, you know, yeah, we like our single family homes, but we always have to get on the car for every little trip we do, take kids to soccer, buy a loaf of bread, get our nails done. All those things require cars. We don't like the pollution. We don't like the rush hour traffic, because I think you have to understand the rush hour traffic and this area is just horrible. I think it's probably one of the worst in the country. Yeah, it's been for a long time. We are tired when gas prices go up. And there's, you know, these refinery outages we have here in California is unacceptable. And people just get screwed by it. We're tired of that system. And then here's another thing. We're also tired of the system where we live in neighborhoods that neighbors don't know you because everybody's so isolated in their homes and their cars We're tired of these neighborhoods that they're so boring and not so pretty compared to the old cities. You know, the old cities had good architecture and character. And then all the homes we live in now, the shopping centers are cookie-cuttered. They're tracked. They're McMansion. I don't know if you've heard of these terms. Yeah, no, of course. I've heard of all of them. You know, we're, we're sick and tired of this. And that's why some of these folks want the new urbanism. They want smart growth. But I tell them, look... As much as the problems you address are so great, you know, your solutions aren't necessarily the the real medicine that's going to solve the problem. In other words, it's going to maybe heal some problems, but it's going to give you a lot of other bad symptoms. You know what I mean? So you got to understand, like, I know you might like sprawl, but at the same time, you have to be on their shoes you have to feel these people because you gotta understand a lot of these new urbanists these smart growth people these sustainable development not all of them but some of them and these are like everyday average people i'm not talking about Luis or hassan or those types of people i'm talking about the everyday average people they're just like us they want something better for for us and everybody else so how can you address these people? What kind of solutions can you bring? How can you say that the, the, the rain, the terror of sprawl is going to end, at least for them? Um, hmm. Because I, mean, I, mean, I have a solution. I can share you some other time. You have to address their solution. Because if you're not, I mean... With all due respect, I mean, I, I don't know how you're going to win, personally. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I could I could go in a few different directions, but um, it's not that I don't have... I mean, I do have solutions. I mean, I don't necessarily have solutions for the people that I'm opposed to, because, I mean, I don't, I don't really think it's my job to figure out how to give them the system they want when I don't even want it myself. But uh, I would say my main... Uh, you know, solution to all of this is just to develop to to develop on some of the open land that they will not let us touch. And if and if, and if I agree, yeah, you know, so, so let's so let's that. so let's say they had like, let's just say, um, you know, I don't want to. I mean, let's just take like Nevada for example, right? Because that's probably one of the most undeveloped you know areas, and that's probably a, that's a bad example because it's all desert. But let's just take like. Yeah, and sadly, the BLM owns like yeah, 90%. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Well, that, no, that, that's why we can't do any of this stuff because they own everything. But let's just, mm-hmm. let's just take a state where there's plenty of buildable land. You could, you could make 20 new cities 
that could hold a couple million people total or maybe even more than that. And you can make different types of cities. So if you want to have a, you know, high density, you know, non-sprawl transit oriented city and, and people want that, then mm -hmm. go ahead and make that. See, the problem I have with a lot of this stuff. Well, is, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll show you some other time. Yeah, go ahead. The, the problem. See, they're, they're trying to take what we already have now and, and they want to change it. And I'm and I'm basically saying leave it alone if you want to have that let, let's make it somewhere else because we have so much of this country to, to build on I mean we don't you know there's enough room for all of us you know okay, what I mean so and, and and hold on, let me just first, real quick and you know if, if you I'm go sorry to, but I, yeah, I I really love what you're saying if you go to other parts of the country you know not everywhere is like L like Southern California I mean there are places that are already built like 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 new york for example is already built like in the manner that you're saying where you are dependent on transit there are all the tall buildings and there's other cities that, that are like that around the country that's why they say the the north the, the east coast is the, the the densest part well i guess southern california is only like the densest part but in terms of like a large area that's the densest part of the whole country so mm -hmm. and, and that that's you know and you could say it's mean or insensitive or, or whatever but, you know, huh. I, I get mad when I see people come here and they say, oh, we want to change this into New York. And I, I say, get the, go to New York then. Like, you don't, you don't, you know, there's already a place over there like that. You don't have to change this place into that. See, the well, thing is, like, people could say I'm a bad guy or I'm wrong or I'm this or I'm that. But the fact is, I'm not going into, into, into different cities and saying, you know, we have to change your lifestyle. What, I, what I'm doing is I'm going into different cities and I'm saying the lifestyle that's already here, I want to preserve it. Now, if people don't like that, then I, I guess they can do their own activism and, and try to change that city. But I don't really see that. I mean, I see it in Los Angeles, but, but I don't do activism in Los Angeles for that very reason, because they're set up completely different than where I'm at. And there's, mm -hmm. people, that, there's people that like that. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to go over there and tell them to, to be a big suburb. You know what I mean? Like if, if they want to be urban and highly dense and, and not use cars, I don't have to go over there. And, okay. and, and I, and I try, and I don't like, I don't go over there. I only go over there when I have to. So, <laughs> you know, Hassan Akrada, okay. he comes over here and he tries to change my city. I say, get out of here. You know, I mean, there's already cities like, like what he's saying. Like I, I went to San Francisco not that long ago. San Francisco is exactly like what you're saying. I mean, it's not car centric. It's very dense. And, uh, and there's tons of open land up there. They could build a big, giant suburbia up there if they wanted to, but they choose not to because the okay. state owns all the land. So really quick, I have to get up for just a second. I'll be back in like two minutes. Okay, well, here's what we may, like I said, agree on and partially agree on. So you basically want L.A. to do more of, or any inner city to do more infill development and then you want the suburbs like where you are not to be really touched. And then you want, you know, other opportunities like transit oriented and infill development and other projects to be done in all the land that's being kept out. Correct. So you want well, to create your own paradise and empty yeah. land. Now, that's well, great. I largely agree with I you. Don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily want L.A. to do infill. Uh, they can do whatever they want. Like if they want to build more or build less, that's fine. Like I said, I don't live there and I go there very okay. rarely. They can do whatever they want. I don't. I, I see Eric Garcetti on TV every day spewing his crap about this and that and bikes and no cars and I just say I don't live there, so I don't care. You can do whatever you want over there. But what worries? Well, but what yeah. But then again, it's 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 the city council's fault. It's the government's fault for allowing the construction of highways in the first place. But but see, but, they caused the problem too. Yeah. But what worries me is you know under SCAG, you know th th this is regional government now. Mm -hmm. You know what? See that I I am opposed to what LA is doing, and I don't want them to do it. But like I said, I don't go over there because it's just, to me, it's pointless to go over there. But the problem with LA is, so for example, if LA creates a whole bike lane network, at some point, my city's going to say, well, in the spirit of connectivity, we have to, you know, we oh, have to yeah. connect our bike lanes to, to LA's <laughs> bike lanes for inclusivity and access and blah, 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 blah. So that is the reason why I'm opposed to LA but you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I don't really say this much on my channel. And it's not because I don't want to say it. It's just I just never, you know, talk. You know, I don't talk like this typically. But 
mm-hmm. you know, I have come to the conclusion that L.A. County is, is finished. Like, L.A. County is going to fall to this Agenda 21, you know, these plans. I don't, I don't think it's going to yeah. come out of it. But San, let me San, let me explain why that's happening and why it, it however it can turn around. But this is let me tell you where I agree with you and may not agree with you. I agree that we have to let some of or at least most of the open space and the preserved land open to development. I do, however, think we have to be cautious in what we build because if we just fill it with big box stores and parking lots and McMansions. I don't think this is acceptable. However, I do want mansions to be put in that land. I want them to be real mansions, not the ugly mansions that are pretty much crap compared to what we used to do in the Victorian days. I think you can pretty much get my point of view. However, here's where where we may disagree. I do think that much of Southern California, even outside the urban areas, should really increase their density substantially. I do believe that there is a possibility that stretching all the California coast, it can turn into Manhattan. And at the same time, and don't get me wrong, we do have to spread out in California, our urban area. We have to sort of spread out and build more single family homes. So I want to spread out further and in the existing areas, I want to go up to the sky, including West Covina. And I know you may not agree with that. Let me explain why. Because, first of all, I believe we can have the transportation capacity so that we don't have to deal with gridlock and congestion. And I'm going to show you the transportation solution some other time. And in order to address affordability, we have to increase supply of housing. Okay. So that's what we have to do because it's all supply and demand economics. But, of course, we're not going to have these huge fees that we talked about, something that we don't want to do. Okay, So we have to create a lot of high-density development, and a lot of them has got to be skyscrapers because we have a housing and affordability problem. But it's not just that. We have to do a lot of other things. Our financial system is the problem. These low interest rates from Janet Yellen, these no-money down loans, they've got to change. That's what's pumping up home prices. You also have to consider Proposition 13 is propping up home prices. There has to be modifications on that. Okay. We also have to understand our trade policy is partially to blame. Why? Because our trade deficits, these foreigners are coming and taking that money and speculating on our real estate. That has to change too. Okay. And by the way, our trade policy is also gutting the Rust Belt, which people are fleeing those areas, and some of them have come here. So that's another reason. But another thing that we can really, really address our housing on affordability crisis, and by the way, um, speaking of high-density development, one of the reasons why sprawled cities don't have it is not because they don't want it. I don't think this is where we may disagree. It's because they have height restrictions. So I want to get rid of many height restrictions And I also want to get rid of land spread out restrictions, too. So like I said, let us go to the sky and let us spread out. So we got to do both ways. But here's the really the heart of the problem that's going to really address affordability and you're going to really love. You have to change your immigration policy for the love of God. This is the immigration policy is what's feeding demand. It's and by the way, let me tell you something. California would have been a totally different game if the 1965 immigration law, and I posted this on your wall, did not get approved by Congress. California has 40 million people. 20 million of them are either foreign-born or people who are children of foreign-born. And a lot of them are illegals, too, by the way. Okay, And I'm a, ch- I'm a child of a foreign-born, by the way. And, you know, you should be glad that some child of a foreign born is telling you this because I know a lot of people like me, they're they're pro immigration. They're like, oh, no, just let them in. Let them in. You know, let let even the refugees come in. And by the way, part of the reason the other problem we have got to address the refugee price problem, because you got to understand part of the reason why they're doing this is to give them housing. But the immigration policies is not only jacking up home prices. Because it's fueling demand. And by the way, you know, a lot of these, you know, environmental 
you know, people out there, wackos, whatever you want to call them, they're all for protecting the land. And then I told this in front of Greenpeace, why don't you address immigration? If we didn't have all this massive immigration, and by the way, along with the civil rights riots of the 1960s, we would have had all this sprawl in the first place. Do you agree? Because all these... You know, because all these different kinds of people move in and then all the other people, they have to move out because they're different. So you have to do something about the immigration law. And it's not just housing prices, by the way, because it's fueling all this demand and not just overcrowding our schools and universities. It's the people that are less competent, that have less respect for our liberties and our constitution, and they're not like us that are willing to stand up. This is why the California government, that horse's arse, piece of garbage government, excuse me for raising my voice, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm really disgusted with these people, okay? And I know I'm sounding like a freak, but I have to. They benefit from these immigration policies. This is why they just passed Medi-Cal expansion for children of, of illegals, anchor babies. They're, this is all engineering they want third world immigration to get third world government. And you wouldn't have been in this situation as bad in California if you didn't have the massive immigration. So you need to stop even the massive legal immigration into the United States. And I hope that, you know, this is going to be done if, you know, you know who gets elected, you know, because, I mean, this is what's giving you all these problems, man. I mean, you look at even even people with my own ethnicity who are immigrants. They're people that have very little care and knowledge and the guts to fight back against this system. And this is this is what I'm talking about. This is why the Gavin Newsoms, the all these Jerry Brown type people, you, you know, all all these types of folks, they like the immigration because they don't fight back and they favor their policies. This is why they're so scared of this whole idea of the wall and the deportations, because they're going to lose their power. And they want the massive immigration because it fuels demand for housing, okay? And it jacks up home prices. And you want to know why politicians like higher home prices? Why? Tell me. Tax revenue. Amen! <laughs> It's well, all social engineering. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know if anybody ever told you this. I figured this out myself. Go ahead. Let's oh, talk. No, I was just going to say, I, I got to run. Um, I'm sure you're aware that just about every problem we have, whether it's immigration, housing, you know, kids being stupid, whatever it is. It, but do it, you want to stop? It, it's, it's all. It, do it's, you want to lead the effort to overturn immigration? It, it, it's, it's all manufactured. I mean, every problem we have has been caused on purpose. N none of it's on accident in a vacuum. Just like the Syrian refugees or the refugees from the Middle East. I mean, even that's manufactured. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, it's too big of a topic. But I mean, you know, that that was not a, a war that started in a vacuum. I mean, that started very deliberately. But um, I got. I, I really got to run. I. Yeah. I 